Hello, I'm Commander Exegius, and today we'll be looking at mining. A polarizing endeavor in Elite, mining can be seen as serene and relaxing or mind-numbingly boring. When improperly outfit, without limpets, it can be extremely frustrating, but with the right loadout, you can enjoy the beautiful sights many of the ring systems have to offer. Let's look at how to outfit a ship properly and some basic mining techniques. While you can mine with any ship in Elite, we'll focus on less expensive starter mining vessels such as a Type 6. No matter what you choose, there are several key modules you're going to want, starting with our mining lasers. While you can blast away at asteroids with any laser, only mining lasers will break off chunks that you can refine into minerals. There are only two varieties, fixed and turreted, with turreted only being necessary if you're going to bore a friend with your mining and multi-crew. Both have the exact same statistics. Now we'll need the second key component, a refinery. Refineries process the raw fragments you'll be collecting into minerals and are critical. The larger the refinery, the higher the bin count. Bins are where each individual element you collect is separated as they are processed. If you have 10 bins, you can have 10 different elements processing at one time. If you pick up an 11th, it can't be refined until one of the 10 bins is emptied. The final critical module is a cargo rack. Cargo racks are where your fully refined minerals will be stored. They'll also store limpets for our first optional, yet very important modules, prospector and collector limpet controllers. Without a collector limpet controller, you'll have to scoop up each fragment individually. And unless you're a masochist, you do not want to do this. Once deployed, collector limpets float around your ship, picking up anything in range until they reach the end of their life or are destroyed by something like point defense. Another key limpet controller is the Prospector Limpet Controller. This will analyze a given asteroid, letting you know what minerals are contained within, with the added benefit of increasing the yield of that asteroid. While a Prospector and Collector Limpet Controller are not strictly necessary, mining without them is an extremely slow and frustrating process you do not want to undertake. As for our other modules, we'll be doing a standard jump range build, but Depending on the ship, we'll want A-rated thrusters to make moving in the asteroid field easier. As with all of my builds, we'll add a shield and if possible shield boosters. For our utility slots, we'll want to add two point defense, one for the top and one for the bottom of the ship. It's likely at some point a pirate will attempt to hatch break you while you're mining, and point defense can protect against those hatch breakers. We can go with D-rated sensors as we won't really need much range with a ton of asteroids in view. Now that we're ready to go, don't forget the final critical piece, limpets. These aren't restocked by standard restocking. You need to head to Advanced Maintenance, Restock, and choose limpets. While you don't necessarily need to fill your hold completely, given their low cost, I suggest just filling up anyway. You can always jettison them later if you have too many. Before heading out, we'll want to set our module priorities and fire groups. If you're new to Power Priorities, have a look at our previous tutorial on the subject, linked on screen now. For our fire groups, we'll want to assign our mining lasers and collectors to one fire group and our prospectors to a second. That way we can deploy our collectors while firing our mining laser. Now we need to find a place to mine. While you can use in-game resources, such as the system map to determine what resources a body has, we'll be using eddb.io to find our location. We'll use the Bodies tab, and once there, we'll set System Reserves to Pristine, Ring Type to the type we're looking for, and Current Location and Reference System. The Ring Type is going to be determined based on the mineral you're looking for. The best advice I can give here is to do a quick Google search for the mineral you're searching for to determine what type of ring to mine. You'll also want to avoid Anarchy Space, and may want to find a high security system as well. Once you arrive at the body to mine, we'll need to find the exact ring. For our example, we're heading to the Delcar system, to Delcar 9A ring. Rings are named by the letter, with the A ring being closest to the body. There will be a visual break between the rings, and you simply need count from the center out to determine the ring you're heading for. In the case of belts, you'll enable this view in your navigation computer and head to the correctly named belt. Now that we've arrived at our ring, we can drop in anywhere we'd like, or, if there's one available, at a resource extraction site. You'll likely want to avoid hazardous sites, as there will be little to no system authority vessels. In general, we want to mine within 20 kilometers of the center of an extraction site, as the asteroid yield here will be considerably higher on average, 
with the disadvantage of pirates likely being in the area. Asteroids are persistent, so if you find a rock with a valuable yield, you can return to it, if you can find it, to mine it again. It takes two hours for the rock to refresh. Mapping rings to find the same rock again is beyond our scope today, but I'll include some links in the description for more advanced miners. Okay, so we have our ship, we've arrived at the ring, and we found a rock. Time to start blasting, right? Well, first, we'll want to be smart about how we mine. Look for rocks that are spinning slowly so they won't fling the fragments all over space. As you approach a rock, fire a prospector limpet and, when it's on the way, target it and wait for it to impact the rock. When it does, you'll see the properties of the rock in your bottom left panel. If the asteroid has what you're looking for, it's time to approach and blast away. When within range, rather close as mining lasers have a very short range, it's time to deploy your mining lasers and start blasting. There is, however, a best place to do this, and that's at the pole of the asteroid. Look at how it's spinning and align yourself to the pole where there will be little to no movement. Once there, you'll likely want to set your pips at 204, so you'll have plenty of capacitor for the energy-hungry lasers. As you're blasting, open your cargo hatch and start sending out your collectors. As the fragments chip off, your collectors will gather them one by one, depositing them in your refinery. As each bin fills, the fragments will be refined into minerals and stored in your cargo rack. Depending on your refinery size, there are times the bins could all have minerals with no additional room for the minerals you actually want. In this case, just have a look at your bins and discard the lower value minerals you're not interested in to make room for others. You should also keep an eye on your remaining limpets and cargo space. Once you've either gathered the needed minerals or run out of limpets or patience, it's time to sell our haul. If you're mining for a mission, just head back to the mission giver and hand over your cargo. If you're mining for profit, we'll want to find a station that pays well. For this, we can again head to eddb.io, then to the Commodities tab. Select the mineral you're selling from the list, enter your current system, and switch Buy or Sell to Sell, remembering to adjust the other settings as necessary. Once you search, you can sort the Sell column to find the station paying the highest price for that commodity. Be sure to have a look at the Age tab, as these values aren't always 100% accurate. Hopefully this guide will have you mining properly in no time, so you can not only complete mining missions and make profit, but you'll be well on your way to mining the 500 tons you'll need to unlock the engineer Selene Jean. While mining isn't my favorite activity, there are times it can be very relaxing to put on some great music and just float in the asteroid field, something that can be very impressive with the scale of virtual reality. Once again, this has been Commander Exegius, reminding you to fly dangerously, and thanks for watching.